Hey guys and welcome! Today I want to talk about a topic that is pretty hot within the Battlefield community at the moment and that's the petition that was made by players to force EA to refunds for Battlefield 2042. And I'm really interested in your opinion to this, so be sure to leave a comment below and let us talk about it. But first of all, let's take a closer look at the petition itself and check the facts. The petition was started at change.org by a person called Satoshi Nakamoto. And if that name sounds familiar to you, then you're probably into cryptocurrencies, cause it's also the name of the person who started Bitcoin. So it is a fake name of course, and the person behind the petition also refuses to use its real name, at least for now. But everyone's using fake names on the internet, so that's not much of a surprise. What he wants is that all players that want a refund for Battlefield 2042 will receive it, no matter which platform they play and bought the game on, and also no matter how long the players have spent playing the game. Because there are actually refund options on all platforms and also for all launchers on PC, but they are limited to a specific time frame. So for example on Steam you can only request a refund when you haven't played the game for longer than 2 hours. And to be honest, that's nothing for a multiplayer game and probably a time frame within which not all bugs and issues appear. So no matter how long the game was played, people should be able to request a refund for 2042, that's what Nakamoto wants. He justifies this with how broken the game was released and that EA showed the players advertising material that didn't match the actual game. Also, customers worldwide are disappointed and lost millions of dollars in some. And so far I have to agree, people are disappointed, yes. And they paid money for a game that was released in a bad state and was even unplayable for some. And a price between $60 and $120 is a lot of money for some people. But what about the claim with the false advertisement? Well, looking at the early concept arts and even at the screenshots that have been shared by the developers and also by EA before the release, I have to admit that the game looks quite different. It looks like a war zone, catastrophes have happened, cities are abandoned and the ones who are left have to fight for the last resources. Looking at the maps now, they seem more empty and cold and have nothing of the atmosphere that the images suggested. I agree with that so far. The trailers on the other hand, that are usually the main advertising material, show a bit more of the reality in game. Still of course, let's say a beautified version of the game, but that's also how advertising works and no one should be really surprised about that. Nakamoto goes on to write that the game was unplayable at launch and even today, after a few updates, it still has bugs that drastically change the in-game experience. And I agree with the last part here. The game still has many bugs and issues, some are not worth mentioning and just appear every once in a while, but others are really annoying and can be game-breaking. For example, the one where you can't aim down sights anymore after exiting a vehicle. Or the bug where you can't access your loadouts at the beginning of a round and when you spawn you deploy with a weapon without any attachments, which is the most annoying bug in my opinion. I'm not quite sure to be honest if I'm extremely lucky with my PC or if others are just incredibly unlucky. Cause I don't have too many bugs in my game, just every once in a while. Of course, if I have them, they are annoying, but I can't say I have a permanent bug fest. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below how it is for you and also what platform you play, that would be interesting. I know that on console there seem to be many more bugs, especially on the old generation. That already starts with players that can't complete the weekly missions cause only 2 of 3 missions are shown, which makes it impossible to unlock the reward. And this is the case since launch already. I can totally understand that this is frustrating and annoying and of course this is not acceptable and has to be solved. Same with the performance and server issues, which is probably the biggest issue for most players. Returning to the petition, Nakamoto also writes that signing it will get you one step closer to getting a refund on Battlefield 2042 if it manages to receive 50,000 signatures or more. And you might have seen the counter already, it's at over 180,000 by the time I'm doing this video. So the goal is reached, but the question is, what's happening now? According to what Nakamoto wrote in the petition, he will reach out to some of the best class action lawyers in the country to evaluate a case against EA and DICE. And I gotta be honest, this sentence makes me doubt that there will ever be something happening here. On one hand, because this part of the petition was already changed from one of the best class action lawyers in the country is willing to take our case against EA to I will reach out to some of the best class action lawyers in the country to evaluate a case against EA. That sounds quite different. And in an update to the petition that was made two days ago, he even writes that he has recently been made aware that EA's user agreement may protect them from any class action lawsuits. To make that clear, I'm not against this petition, not at all. I just want to give you a little insight on what you sign or may not sign, nothing else. And for this point, in my opinion, a bit more realism would have been better. 
saying that he has a good lawyer and will try everything to file a lawsuit against EA and with this help the players to get back their money. Something like this and maybe check the user agreement before starting the petition to be able to include the aforementioned info in the text. That just makes this look a bit more serious. At the end, however, he's also writing that the gaming community should not tolerate this abuse and bullying from multi-billion dollar corporations who make unfinished games and false advertisements. And that's the more interesting point actually. And also the first thing that I had in mind when seeing this petition. Cause even though it is specifically focused on Battlefield 2042, I think it was also made to make a general statement. To say that players do not want to accept any more unfinished games in the future. Because looking at the last, let's say, five years, especially at AAA titles, there were only a few that were released, finished and polished, while most of them needed another six months or even a full year of updates to be in a state they should have been at release. So releasing unfinished games seems to be a general problem in the industry. And the question is, why? Is it because of the publishers that put too much pressure on the developers and have unrealistic schedules? Or because of the developers themselves that don't put enough passion into their games anymore? I don't know, but from what I learned about economy, the first point seems to be the more likely. But also, games are released in a frequency that might make it hard for developers to put their heart and soul into them. So maybe it's a bit of both. But at the end, unfortunately, it's the customer, in this case the player, who suffers from this. And I think right now the suffering is even harder to bear, cause people are mentally exhausted from two years of pandemic, lockdowns and all kinds of measures, and they might have less patience than under normal circumstances. Also all fans of shooter games, and especially the Battlefield community, were looking forward to a game that they could enjoy for hours and hours without any major bugs and issues, and that gives them a break from the real world. And now they are disappointed, of course, I can totally understand this. Like I said, I don't have that many bugs and I also still enjoy playing the game, but I also played it right from the start and as much as I still like it, the server issues, bugs, stuttering, frame drops and so on was horrible. Maybe if I would have paid for the game, I would have thought about getting a refund as well in the first week, but I'm using EA Play Pro and it's part of this anyhow, so I might have more patience here. But I also see that DICE and the other studios have updated the game and it definitely is in a better state now than it was at release. Not in its best state of course, and also the delay of season 1 was another disappointment for many players, but seeing that there are things changing, even if it's slow, that's what gives me hope for the future of 2042 and the franchise in general. Coming back to the core point of this video, to the petition, I can understand that people are disappointed and that they're trying everything to get a refund and also to get recognized by EA and the big publishers in general, which is probably the more important point of this petition. And I'm honestly really curious what will happen now. If there will be a lawsuit filed or not, if EA will react to the petition in any way, if they will offer refunds by themselves, like Nakamoto suggests in an update to the petition, and if it will have an impact on the future of the game, the franchise or AAA titles in general. My personal opinion is that it's definitely good to draw attention on the general problem with the release of unfinished games and that players show that they are not willing to take any more of this. But for this specific one, I don't think that there will be much happening, to be honest. I don't think anyone will get a refund through this petition and I don't even think that there will ever be a lawsuit filed. But let's see, maybe I'm wrong. What I can only recommend right now is that you should try to use subscription services like Xbox Game Pass or EA Play to try a game before you buy it. For example, EA Play Basic is $4 for one month and in the case of Battlefield 2042 you are able to play the full game for 10 hours. And if you should decide to buy it you even get an additional discount. But 10 hours is enough time to find out if the game is in a good state or not and if you like it. If you don't like it, you only wasted $4 and not $120. So that's the only advice I can give you here. If you feel like you want to sign the petition or you just want to take a look at it yourself, you can find a link to it in the description below the video. And that's it for today. I'm not doing many videos like this where I'm just talking about something and share my opinion, but in this case I felt like I want to do it. And of course I'm also interested in hearing your opinions, so tell me in the comments below what you think about this. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then. Thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.